As good as Louisville has been over the past five, six, seven years, Florida State has won seven of the last 11 in this series. And we are underway, and the Seminoles come up empty on their opening possession. Tab, what are you looking at early in this game? Well, for Florida State, I mean, they're trying to continue this home win streak on their home floor as Morgan Jones gets a travel call on the first. Understandably, a little game. excited. Yeah, yeah, she's a little excited. It's her homecoming in a way. All American here for the Seminoles decided to transfer out to Louisville for her graduate season. I know you played all your college career at Georgia Tech. Can you imagine playing 114 games for Georgia Tech and then going to play for a rival school and coming back to Atlanta? I can't actually. <laughs> I would have came out with like five degrees. <laughs> Nia Latson, double zero in white. Coming off 31 points the other day and the huge win over NC State. Jasmine Massenville doesn't always look for her shot. She misses early here. Uh, transfer from Kentucky. Here's Haley Van Litt the other way. She said the open Van Litt coming off a season high 29. A narrow loss to the Hokies. Still looking for our first points. Morgan Jones keeps possession alive. Van Litt pull up. Each team over at the start. Yeah, I think both teams just kind of settling in. You see Van Lith a little winded, and that's what I expect the pace of this game as we see the key to the game. And for Louisville, it's going to be defend without foul and versus Virginia Tech. They lost by two. And you know what? Cochran and both her and Dixon had foul trouble in that game, only had four points apiece. So they've got to be able to defend without foul and to keep them in the game. And for Florida State, box out and rebound. Her wife Koff telling me earlier today that she liked how her team rebounded the ball versus NC State. She wants to see them continue that here today. Giving up an offensive rebound here as Cochran gets the board. Dixon, rather, excuse me. And of course, those keys were presented by your local Ford dealer. 90 seconds in, still looking for the first points. Florida State typically does not have trouble scoring points. Seminoles are averaging almost 88 a game. They've had nine different games scoring 90 or more this year. And that's not just beating up on the smaller conference schools. They've got 90 plus in two thirds of their ACC games to this point. I mean, there's no drop off. This is a team that can score, well, multiple players can score on this team because Latson, as she puts up. This her first shot. Timpson lost it on the way up. Florida State likes to play with pace. Get shots off early in the shot clock. Cochran can't connect, and the two teams are a combined 0 for 9. And credit Florida State's defense. They forced Cochran out on that when she had to shoot a fadeaway jumper. She couldn't get positioned inside. Bajetti breaks the seal and gets the scoring started for Florida State. For me, Bajetti is the X factor for Florida State. We all know what Latsik can do. She's very impressive with Bajetti. She's just been competing at such a high level. You mentioned it already. She's coming off two back-to-back 20-plus -back point games. Florida State really needs her on both sides of the floor. To answer, in and out for Carr. Rebound Howard. Yeah, Bajetti now eight for her last 13 from beyond the arc. She was 10 of 70 before that. How does that happen? It's her competitiveness. She just competes at such a high level. And right on cue, the pull-up jumper. And just look at Bajetti. She is ready and fired up to compete in this one. Louisville misses again. And the stick back on the offensive glass gives the Cardinals their first points of the game. Former Seminole Morgan Jones. She knows these rims. Morgan Jones gave Louisville a 28-point game last year playing for the Seminoles was the highest points given up by the Cardinals in three seasons by any player. So Jeff Walls went out and got it. You do not really need the shot clock today, Tab. <laughs> Jones misses the runner. I'm surprised if we get to single digits. The pace from that early on. Penetration in the lane. Foul called on Carr. Getty pushing the tempo. Carla Fountain, referee extraordinaire who's been refereeing since I played college basketball. I won't tell you how long ago, but kind of getting in there and telling Bajetti, 
hey, this is where the contact's gonna come in. Let's keep this game even. You weren't playing that long ago. Oh, come man, on. Man. It was a minute ago. Good box out. Few minutes. Good box out by Liz Dixon right there on KK Timpson. A long time. So it's been a minute since Dixon played for your alma mater, the Yellow Jackets. Dixon! <laughs> Right away, the Cardinals trying to go inside. You've seen them go to Dixon. You've seen them go to Cochran. Both of those players having to shoot jumpers turned out and worked out well for Dixon that time. Massonville had it poked away. It'll stay with the Seminoles. Already seen the first Seminoles sub. Taylor O'Brien checking in. And here comes the second, Valencia Myers, as you look at Jeff Walls in year 16 at Louisville. At least 20 wins in 12 consecutive years, and you can run down the gamut of statistical achievements for Jeff Walls leading Louisville. And yet the Cardinals have had something of an uncharacteristic first couple months of the season. All well, the rebound finds Howard, tipped around, and Aaron Howard converts. Second chance effort for Florida State. No one boxed out on that possession for the Cardinals allowed Aaron Howard to come up with that rebound. And look, Louisville's had a couple bumps in the road as we see another quick shot and a quick make. Liz Dixon back-to-back -back buckets for the Cards. And Louisville enters today 13-6, and 4-2 and two in the league. They've won eight of their last ten. Massengill banks it home at the other end. The only losses for Louisville in this stretch at Duke and at Virginia Tech. I mean, no shame in losing to those yeah, teams no, right now. Two really tough teams to beat. One of them ranked, one of them probably gonna be ranked as Florida State's Taylor O'Brien comes up with a steal. Good hands for O'Brien. She'll go coast to coast and score, plus the foul. And for Liz Dixon, this has to be a learning lesson right here. If you're gonna foul and run down in the lane and really, create that really contact, you really gotta foul, and right here, O'Brien comes up with the steal, takes it in transition, coast to coast. Dixon fouling, but not enough. O'Brien gets the and one, puts him up by five. ACC basketball is brought to you by Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealers today. Toyota, let's go places. By CPI Security. CPI Home Security that protects what matters most. And by Coyote Tractor, we dig dirt. Cool but comfortable Sunday here in Tallahassee. Comfortable if you have long sleeves on. It's a nice sunny day outside. And there's Michaela Timpson. She is our Hardy's star to watch. Leading the ACC in both field goal percentage and block shots. We talked so much about Tania Latz and Tabitha, but Timpson's having one heck of a year, too. I mean, averaging almost 15 points a game, almost a double-double, nine and a half rebounds. And those blocks per game, 2.36 nationally in the NCAA leads the ACC. Credit KK Timpson's presence for the reason why Cochran and Dixon have both been shooting jump shots so far in this matchup. She guards the paint for the Seminoles and leads the way of blocks per game in ACC play. And might I add, Evan, Timpson's coming off two double-double performances versus NC State and Boston College. 14 points, 10 rebounds versus NC State was perfect from the free throw line, so she gets in there, creates the contact, and knocks down the free throws. And because as Dixon didn't really get her money's worth, it's one free throw, and O'Brien converts the and one. Three points for O'Brien, 12-6 lead for Florida State. Seminoles really routed NC State here on Thursday. It was an epic and brilliant performance. Carr fakes it, takes it, makes it. Carr's first three of the game did go in, so she takes a step in and knocks that one down off the one dribble pull up, gets herself going. Yeah. 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 would love Carr to get back going. Double figures just once of her last, one time in her last four games. Seminoles turn it over. First Florida State giveaway, 
and a missed layup for Cochran at the other end. And Cochran wishes she had that one back because that was a beauty in transition. She ran the lane perfectly, just had a little bit too much on the touch at the end. The Jetty is feeling it right now. She is cold blooded. I'm just impressed with her, her level of competitiveness. She's turned it up a notch in ACC play. I'm impressed with her level of precision. Two for three from deep. Now nine of her last 15 from beyond the arc over the past few games. When she was previously shooting just 14% out there. Eight points for Bajetti. Akasa Robinson. Lost it out of bounds. It'll stay with Louisville. So Bajetti's early numbers. And everybody focuses in on Ladson, but Ladson hasn't even been in as much as the Jetty has. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They say no basket, which is a great for Florida State. Nyla Harris was wide open on the inbounds. And she was leapt upon <laughs> by Valencia Myers. <laughs> Got Myers on her feet. Myers having her own shot blocking career here at Florida State. Lines the record books here. For the Seminoles. Surprise, we're not shooting free throws there? No, because um, she jumped in time to not uh, give her the shot. For the first time in the game, shot clocks in single digits. Haley Van Lith is the end of the shot clock money for Louisville, and they're going to count the basket. Kind of an anticlimactic and one there. Haley is just like, whatever, no big deal. And she plays with a chip on her shoulder. Notice who they got the ball to at the end of the shot clock. She just sizes up the defense, takes the contact from Bajetti, and at the end has enough hang time to focus in and finish the shot. Trying to complete the end one here at the free throw line. With that basket, she crosses over 1,200 points in her career. Entered the day at 1,199. It's her 83rd game as a Louisville Cardinal. The junior from Washington State. Three-point play makes it a four-point game. Excuse me. And I was just adding to Van Lith how she's played at such a high level since she's come in as a freshman. Just the amount of pressure. Just a junior. The defense from Van Lith leading the break after the steal. Harris up and under. And she stepped out of bounds. Good defense there by the Seminoles, cutting off the baseline and forcing Harris to have to go out of bounds on that one. O'Brien, another beautiful drive. I mean, just both teams in transition, just taking it coast to coast. O'Brien was the leading scorer before missing 10 games this season for the Seminoles. So ever since she's been back, it's been a nice offensive threat that they've added to their arsenal. Olivia Cochran, strong take. She got fouled, and free throws are coming. Fouls on Myers. Olivia Cochran just has the body, the speed, the agility. She has that big body, but she can move her feet. I love how she can stretch the floor, and on that one just takes the other post off the dribble and creates the contact. It's in foul trouble for much of Thursday's game against Virginia Tech. Only four points in ten minutes. It was 100%. <laughs> she was two of two in that game, but she just couldn't stay on the floor. 0 for 2 from the line. At this end of the floor, Florida State has made its last five field goal attempts. None of them from Tania Latson. She's 0 for 3. Kind of a wild shot there. Valenzuela looking for the whistle. Robinson the other way for Louisville. Picasso Robinson, such a valuable blue player for this Cardinals team and Van Lith traveled she can't believe the call and credit the Seminole defense the double team came with Timpson and Massengill trapped Haley Van Lith she had nowhere to go no other players in her vision and forced the travel five first corner turnovers for Louisville and a three for Valenzuela from the corner 
look at this Seminole team, they just have so many threats. And I like that you mentioned a minute ago that Ladson hasn't scored in this game because that's the beauty of this Seminole team. They have so many people who can pick up the slack in the first half, and Ladson just comes and takes over in the second. Rika Kono did not play on Thursday, getting some first quarter minutes today, and gets the assist as Van Lith dials long distance again. Got to play Van Lith off the bounce or for her shot. She is lethal in so many ways. Another wild drive. Van Lith getting on the floor, doing a little bit of everything so far in the first quarter. Robinson attacks Massengill, and it rolls off the front rim. Robinson saying, hey, where's the foul? But a nice nifty reverse layup. A little bit too much at the end there. Latson setting up the offense. About a 12 second difference between the game and shot clock. Pretty good swarming defense by the Cardinals. And they're going to call a kick ball, which is going to reset the shot clock to 20 with 20.6 remaining in the quarter, assuming that's what they stick with. But now the shot clock's under 10, and Mikasa Robinson. Well, if they call it a kick ball, it should reset the shot clock to 20, right? And I think that's created a little bit of confusion. Yep, and you're right, they reset it to 20. But Jeff Walls is frustrated, because he's like, it wasn't a kick ball. She dribbled off our, off our girl's foot. Just because it hits your foot, does it always kick, make it, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. We can have that philosophical debate either. <laughs> five to shoot, five in the quarter. O'Brien's had a hot hand, missed this time. Rebound Louisville, and that'll end the first 10. Credit Robinson's defense on Ladson. Created that play, didn't allow Florida State to get into any momentum, any movement, any fluidity on that offensive possession. Seminoles' largest lead was nine. Van Liss late three makes it a six-point game as we head to the second quarter here on a sunny Sunday in the capital of Florida. And Bajetti, they asked her earlier this week, you know, what part of the American game or the U.S. game would she like to change compared to the style of play that they play in Finland? She said, the contact. In Finland, they're able to do more hand checking. They're able to have more contact, a little bit more physical. She wishes that the U.S. game was more like that, and it shows in her style of game. She's a very physical guard. The officials are stingier here in America. <laughs> My knees thank you, officials. Harris, strong take. Unable to finish, though, and Valenzuela pulls down the miss. Hadn't been too many quarters this year that Tania Latson has gone scoreless, and her team has still outscored its opponent by a half dozen. Travel called on Valenzuela. But the beauty of that, Evan, is that Latson's had games like that all season long. Like, that's how she operates, where she uses that first half to kind of fill the game out, and then comes back in the second half and is just blown people away. So other than that 10-point game that she had a couple games ago, her scoring's been out of the water. Over 36 times this year. Breaking the Florida State record with a performance on Thursday night. Oh, Van Lith gets bumped on her way to the bucket. And somebody else for the Cardinals have got to get involved in the scoring. Haley Van Lith has six points going down the Cardinals scoring sheet. But you've got to find a way to get Cochran involved. Five-second violation on the inbounds pass. Louisville couldn't get it in. Foul that set up the inbounds was on Omaria Gordon, her first. Gordon, guarded by Van Lith. Oh, clean defense. What yeah. a play by Haley Van Lith. Absolutely. I mean, just an excellent job getting in there, not fouling. Stay the same way, but this is a heck of a defensive play. Keeps her eye on the ball and just ties it up from Gordon. Overplay the inbounds pass, and it'll be a. It's going to be called an offensive foul. Excellent on job. Tinson. Excellent job by the freshman, Nyla Harris. She just gets in there, 
positions her body. She's well outside of the arc and does a good job not allowing Timpson to go around her and just absorbs the contact. Similar start to the second quarter like we had in the first. Neither team scoring in the first 90 seconds of the period. Defense has been the story, and then an opportunity for there. Timpson fumbled it away. Last touch, though, by Harris. I think Timpson couldn't believe how wide open she was, but then you also have Harris flying in her vision. Affected her catching that pass. Up high for Valenzuela, over to Latson. She's already missed as many shots today, Tab, as she missed on Thursday night when she was 13 of 16. So, well, oh, that one had to go in, but no, she starts 0 for 4. But slowly starting to get warmer, and you're seeing now she's looking to create as Kono knocks down the open three in transition for the Cardinals, bringing them within three. I think Jeff Walls would love to get her more shots. She's now 7 of 13 from the season on three. Not a ton of attempts, but over 50%. Valenzuela. Rebounded by Van Lith. Are we going to put Van Lith on like the quintuple double watch today? She's had steals, she had blocks, rebounds, assists, points. She does everything for the Cardinals. Everything. Cochran. Give me that. Can't take it. Something going on with that rim down it's there. It's something going on because that's the second one that's kind of bounced in and out for Liv Cochran as Latin takes it on the interior and draws the foul. But I like what I'm seeing. They're trying to get Cochran the ball so her and Timpson can go at each other in the paint. Josie Williams in for the first time for Louisville. Latson at the line where she has made a home. This next free throw will be her 150th free throw attempt of the season. <laughs> She's had double digit free throw attempts six times. And in those games that she's had double digit attempts, she's shooting 94%. She's 65 for 69 in those games, which just to show you, she takes advantage yeah. of the line. I mean, she reset the program book, the program history book here at Florida State, not once but twice this season. She's number one and number two in program history and free throw made. Clemson, she was 15 of 15. Back on January 1st and versus Georgia Tech, she was 13 of 13. So she, like you said, takes advantage of the free throw line. Ono can't connect. Harris on the stick back for two. Harris has been getting a lot more playing time for the Cardinals, improving why she can get in there. She's been rebounding the ball, but also getting nice little chippies around the rim like that. Florida State. No field goals in the first three and a half minutes of the quarter. A drought that continues with a Bajetti miss. Nice job by Howard keeping possession alive. And good job by Howard getting in there and get the rebound. But if you're Jeff Walls, you're telling your team. Doc Van Lith had another steal, but he's called for the reach-in foul. And Jeff Walls pleading the case for Van Lith. But back to what I was saying before, Haley Van Lith wouldn't have picked up this foul on Bajetti as she reaches in with the left hand and creates the contact had they not allowed the Seminoles to get an offensive rebound. Second try of the possession, and again, the rim just said no. Louisville turns it over on the outlet looking for Kona. But Evan, this whole place was ready to erupt if that three would have went down for lots, and everybody here is on pins and needles waiting for her to knock down her first shot today here at the Tucker Center. Kirk Wyckoff just kind of shook her head like, really, that's not going in? <laughs> Offensive foul on the illegal screen. They got Latson with her first. So Florida State has missed its last five shots. It's got two turnovers in the quarter as well. They get three turnovers in the quarter. Not the same pace that we started with. Like when we started with, there was barely any stoppage of the clock. The shot clock wasn't getting down under 10 seconds. Now it's a little bit stagnant. Both teams kind of turning the ball over, not able to create some fluid offense. Latson with a quick hands. Loose ball pops to Williams. Florida State was asking for a backcourt, but it was clearly deflected back there. 
Clock winding down, and Robinson puts it in. A nice one dribble pull up for Mikasa Robinson. She just does what she has to do. The best defender for the cards, but also can make it happen offensively as Timpson. Again, misses the first, but sticks with it and gets the first field goal of the quarter for Florida State. Just so athletic. She out jumps the competition and so strong. She has a nice touch around the rim. Nice job finishing. Long range shot wouldn't go, and a foul in the rebound action against Louisville. Thon Harris, her first. Harris a little bit too physical down there, jockeying for position. Attempting to get the rebound on Aaron Howard. See Tanaya Latson going to the bench. Latson said she was asked what's her favorite part of her game, and she said her defense. Yeah. And she's like, defense is what gets me going. And it's interesting that she plays for Brooke Wyckoff, who Sue Semrau called one of the best defenders that she ever coached in her illustrious career. You can't control every shot going in and out. Some days it's your night, sometimes it's not. But what you can't control is your effort on defense, and you can play yourself into a game even if you're missing shots. And Liv lost it. Florida State ball. And Bajetti is all fired up. Causes that turnover right here. KK Timpson making it happen. Doesn't make it happen on the first one. Gets her offensive rebound, puts it back, puts Florida State up by three. Louisville on a 10-4 run to transform a nine-point deficit into a three-point deficit. 4.31 remaining in the second quarter. A look at the leading scorers in the ACC. Latson and Van Lith in our game today. Fair, Kitley, Kelly, explosive scorers as well for their respective schools. Like Deesha's game face there in the middle. <laughs> she is a tough cookie for Coach Jack up at the Dome. Today, Latson 0 for 5 from the floor, and yet her team's still up by 3. And you can see her start to warm up. You can feel it. The last couple shots that she shot today have literally rimmed in and out of the basket. So she's just getting warmed up, but only 2 points 0 for 5 from the field. And Haley Van Lith averages almost 5 points underneath Lats and today just six points to a five from the field and understandably so because both teams are going to key in on the number one and number two scores in the ACC. Latson will remain on the bench out of the break here. I mean most of her 30 point games have come in about 30 minutes. I mean she averages 29.7 minutes per game. Also averages about three and a half assists per game, creating for her teammates. And that makes sense. In the first half, she's trying to get other people open, allowing other teammates to get involved and become scoring threats. And traditionally, this season in the second half, she's just come alive. We should focus in on Jasmine Massengill and Mikasa Robinson for a moment. They were matched up against each other. That possession as Louisville gets the stop. The length of Jones and Williams on that affected O'Brien shot went straight to the arms of Morgan Jones. Massengill and Robinson, you said before the game that they're two important players for their teams, kind of soft-spoken leaders in yeah. certain ways. Jumper from the corner, knocked down by the former Seminole Morgan Jones. And then we noticed that in their game on Thursday, Massengill and Robinson, is again the rim flummoxing Florida State. Massengill and Robinson each had the same exact stat line in their game on Thursday. Six points, eight rebounds, six assists. Robinson adds to her rebound total and her assist total. Setting up Jones again. And that's exactly the player that has to get going in place of Van Lith. Van Lith obviously is at the top of the scouting report, and so is Morgan Jones. But Morgan Jones, to me, is going to be that X factor today. Her and Bajetti right on cue as she takes the contact and finishes the two underneath the rim. Louisville's first lead of the game short lived as Bajetti moves into double figures. She's got 10 already. Three minutes to play in the half. I think it's fair to say lower scoring than we expected. Absolutely, and that kind of has taken me by surprise as... Jones, tough catch, falling out of bounds, turns it over. 
Van Lid tried to get the alley to Morgan Jones. No good for O'Brien. I think when Seminole fans saw that pass going up, they're like, oh, we, we know what's coming. <laughs> We've seen this before. <laughs> of the uh, gazelle that antelope leaps through the lane. She's your sister, right? She's my sorority sister. Happy Founders Day to all my AKs out there as Josie Williams three doesn't go, but happy Founders Day, happy J15. Is it 115 years? 1908, you do the math, I'll, I'll believe you on that one. The Jetty feeds it inside, great dish. And Florida State gets two more from Timpson. The ball movement for the Seminoles was what made that play so successful, so unselfish, making the extra pass and finding KK Timpson underneath. Nearly a steal for Timpson. She thought she had it. Williams able to maintain possession. Bodies tumble. The foul's on Florida State. Pajetti's like, are you kidding me? Brooke Wyckoff in disbelief. And the fans are also in disbelief. But let's take another look right here. Bajetti drives in and the nice unselfish play at the end. She draws in two defenders, leaving KK Timpson wide open underneath. Wyckoff's reaction to that was all time. And the officials are going to take a look at this, sending both teams back to their benches to uh, see if there was anything extracurricular or inappropriate. I mean, you've got players who are competitors on the floor, but Jetty is definitely a competitor. I don't see her as a dirty player, but she is physical. And she's going to bring out that physical competitiveness versus anybody who she plays against as well. So the, the referees just doing the their due diligence the basket trying to keep this game under control and make sure they get the calls right. So the most Louisville interesting thing to me ball. about this last sequence, Tabitha, is the officials are just now getting over to the monitor. They spent a good 45, 60 seconds talking amongst themselves as a trio before even going to look. They're, I mean, you could talk about wanting to move the game along. Rod Creech is going to come over and let Tabitha know what the investigation is all about. We have a common foul on the floor. Uh, we have an appeal that the shot would count, right? So it's when the contact occurs on the play is that the shot was released. So we're looking at the monitor. You might have heard what Rod said, but Tab, they're checking to see if this basket should count. And I think they're doing the right thing. There was an appeal, like he said, on the play. So make sure you get it right, because when it's this close in the ACC and this close of a game, three-point game in the second quarter, every basket's going to count. And let's just take a second look at this. Well, Bajetti gets a shot in the chops and then sort of pulls Williams down. And they called the foul on Bajetti. And Louisville wanted the basket, and they say no. The call on the floor stands. It's no basket. It's going to be Louisville ball out of bounds. So both fan bases are unhappy because the foul on the floor stands. It's a foul on Florida State, but there's no basket. So the officials have done their job and alienated everybody, <laughs> and now we can move on. Nobody's happy, but I do agree with the call. The foul occurred before the shot left Van Lith's hands. Now, who fouled who can be another, you know, argument or debate. Carla yep. Fountain saying when the contact occurred, she was not in her shooting motion. Yep. And Louisville was charged a timeout for that challenge. Okay, let's play ball. And Louisville is back within one. A nice look from Van Lith. She was all the way on the other side of the floor, but spotted Jones underneath the rim, led her right to the basket for the easy two. Jones has settled in this game nicely. Had she eight points, five rebounds in eight minutes. Almost like she's at home. <laughs> Meanwhile, Latson now 0 for 6. O'Brien on the drive and the dish, and Latson is on the board. Her first field goal and the foul. Olivia Cochran was ready to take the charge from Taylor O'Brien, but O'Brien was brilliant in drawing the contact right here, takes it inside and dishes it off right before she can lean into Cochran and give her that contact. Sets Latson up for the and one. 
Dixon picked up her second foul on the play. Latson's got five points in the half. Robinson lost her dribble. Needs help. Gets it to Cochran. Minute to play in the half. Morgan Jones. How many times have they seen that here in tally? And that was easy for Morgan Jones. That's her go-to move. She just leaps out in front with that quick first step and elevates over all the defense. Ten points in the half for Jones. Massengill answers for Florida State. Like a true vet does. Just knows how to answer for the Seminoles, what they need, at what time they need it. A true vet bringing that Kentucky experience, that championship experience to the Seminoles. To your point, it's her 130th college basketball game today between Tennessee, Kentucky, and now Florida State. Off the bottom of the backboard, Robinson was denied. Final seconds of the half, Latson, no! Jones tips the rebound and a heave down floor takes away the final seconds of the first half. Excellent defense there in transition by the Cardinals, avoiding a transition layup, an easy two to get Latson going at the end of the first half. Pretty entertaining first 20 minutes. Florida State led by as many as nine. Louisville built a one-point lead at 25-24, but then Watson got going, her three-point play. Built the Florida State lead back up. 33-29 is your halftime score. Two good teams playing today here in Tallahassee. Just another Sunday in the ACC with two top teams, Louisville and Florida State. 33-29 as we begin the third quarter here inside the Tucker Center. Evan Leffler with Tabitha Turner. Louisville gets to head back home after today, although it doesn't necessarily mean it gets easier with Boston College and NC State coming to town. After today, Florida State is at Virginia, and we should shout out the Virginia Cavaliers taking care of business against a good BC team today without Mira McLean, who, who we had a front row seat to her unfortunate and really sad injury last Sunday in Raleigh. Coach Mox, the leader of Virginia, confirmed that she is out for the rest of the season with a knee injury. The Cavaliers able to bounce back and get the win at home today. Yeah, I was wondering how they were going to respond. And again, that Boston College team is something to be reckoned with. They've knocked out a couple ranked opponents in the ACC as Van Lith starts the half. Someone who knows a little bit about knocking out ranked <laughs> opponents in the ACC. Right inside of the three-point line, but a good start for her to get that first shot going. Eight points for Haley. And there's another steal for Van Lith. She's just had her game face on from the opening tip today. Cochran kicks it out. Morgan Jones needs help for Van Lith. Oh, blocked by Latson. Latson and Van Lith battling for it. Latson finds it ahead to Vajetti. Excellent, excellent defense there. Latson got her hands, created the turnover, got her hands in the passing lane, and just looked right up the floor. Vajetti sprinted out for the easy two. And lift short Dixon. Oh, looked like she had a layup that she just passed up. Instead, Chris and Carr over to Jones. Rainbow two. Passes up her shot to get an even better shot. Dixon being unselfish. Could have had an easy layup, but decided to stretch the possession for the cards. And works out in their favor as Aaron Howard lights it up for the Seminoles, nothing but net. Cochran just late closing out there on Howard, who was open in the corner. But that's just the thing for this Florida State team. You key in on Latson, where you got to worry about Bajetti. If you key in on Bajetti, you got to worry about Howard. Then you got to worry about Timson. They've got so many scoring threats, hence why they're number one in the ACC in scoring offense. Aaron Howard has now made a three in 13 consecutive games this year. Cochran. Makes up for the defensive laps with a free throw jumper. KK Timpson was late, rotating off the hedge. Got back to her man, but nobody picked up Cochran. 
First points of the game for Liv Cochran. Nice pass by Bajetti. And one chance here for Timpson. Timpson shaking her head because she almost fumbled that one out of bounds, was able to hold on to it. And I think that little half second that she fumbled the ball allowed her to collect herself and draw the contact from Cochran right there, completes the and one. Almost fumbles it out of bounds, but gets the and one. Doesn't complete the free throw. First miss of the line today for the Seminoles. Five point game, early third quarter. Carr fakes it, takes it. Battle for the board. Cochran able to throw it off Mass and Gilbert. Secured by Timpson. And here's Bajetti. One more time. Nope. Long rebound finds Latson. She could have looked to attack there. Instead, she kicked it for Howard. Bajetti off the bounce. Gets it back, almost boomerang back to her. But then she had her pocket picked by Cochran. Nice. <laughs> it's going to be an and one chance here for Louisville as Morgan Jones just flies into the contact. This athletic play by Jones in transition, she just takes Timpson off the dribble and hangs in the air, takes the left arm to void off the contact, keeps her eye up at the rim and just banks it home. It's been an enjoyable homecoming so far today for Morgan Jones. Brad transfer from Florida State out of Jonesboro, Georgia. 15 points, five rebounds, and a two-point game. The Jetty creates contact before the shot. Jones picks up her first. And Bajetti did an excellent job there. She knew that she had a taller, more athletic Morgan Jones on her. Played with her on this Florida State team, so she knows that she has to hang in the air and absorb that contact. Did a good job not getting her shot blocked. Latson rejected by Cochran. Brooke Wyckoff is like, did you see the contact there? Olivia Cochran saying on the other end, not in your house because this is my paint. Saying that that's a clean block, but Latson coming up saying, hey, that's a foul. She grabbed me on the arm. Nashville go over to Howard. Shot clock winding down. But Jetty realizes it. Missed the rim. Rebound for Cochran. Here come the cards. Carr regathers out for Jones. Oh, acrobatic drive again, and Morgan Jones will have a chance to tie it up from the free throw line. I mean, she's just so long and agile that it's hard to defend those layups. And she has that quick first step, where if you don't cut that first step off, well, then she's got an extra step on you right here, beats the defense. And Massengill, a step too slow, is forced to foul Morgan Jones. So impressed by the showing that Jones had against the cards last year in her similar uniform as she knocks down the free throw. Dropped 28 points against them last season. He was so impressed that he went out and got her in the transfer portal. Nice when it works out like that, isn't it? She had dropped the most points versus the Cardinals that any player had ever dropped in three seasons. I want her on my team, Coach Wall said, and it worked out. Jeff Wallace has done a great job as any as good a job as anyone in ACC women's basketball. At, you know, enhancing his team Absolutely. with the transfer portal. You look at the players yeah. they added last year. What a season Emily Engsler had for the Cardinals. And then Keanu Smith. Sure. Chelsea Hall. Yeah. All impact transfers for the Cardinals. A few more this year, including Jones. Latson. Jump ball is called. Seminole fan base cannot believe it. Both Latson and Brooke Wyckoff thought that that was a foul. 
And right here, Ladson gets her own rebound over three Louisville defenders. Yeah. And Morgan Jones gets her hands in there. So that is the correct call. Funny, because I was going to say, yeah, that's a foul. So <laughs> We see the game from different We do. That's what makes it great. Here's a foul. That we agree on. O'Brien will go to the line. Much needed free throw attempts here for the Seminoles who have missed their last six field goal attempts. Number two on Van Lith in the foul department. By the way, Van Lith has once again played every minute so far for Louisville. Man, just what she brings to this team. I mean, Evan, can you guys imagine out there at home? This is a player who came in her freshman season as O'Brien knocks down the second free throw, but has increased her scoring averages every season and has had the weight of this team on her shoulder. Sure, the past couple of seasons she's had other players to rely on, but just playing at such a high level her entire career, she's just a junior. A long two, and Van Lith splashes it in. So clutch right there, creating her own offense. No one got open for the ball in the Cardinals. Everybody defended well by the Seminoles, so she just created her own offense off the bounce. Van Liff into double figures for the 19th straight game. Every game this year, and an answer from Bajetti, the Finnish superstar. Her competitive nature just allows her to attack that lead foot of Morgan Jones. She goes into both Cardinal defenders and gets the end one. And look at her reaction as she comes back up. She wants all the smoke. 15 for Bajetti. Lead back up to four. Whichever team escapes with a win today is gonna feel like they really earned it. It's a, it's a high level defensive grinder of a game with talented offensive players working for everything they can get. And we thought it was going to be a track meet, and at times it has been just non stop transition on both ends, but at times it's been really stagnant. Chrislyn Carr, three. Leads the ACC in three point field goal percentage. That's a player that if the Cardinals get her going, this can change the momentum for Louisville. 12th in the nation and made threes. Massengill looking down low, unable to finish. Myers, Louisville looking to retake the lead. Van Lift, 10.7 rebounds, five assists. She also has five turnovers. Morgan Jones, no. And a late whistle is going to send Jones to the line. I think. The Cardinals have found the formula. Give the ball to Morgan Jones, allow her to penetrate and draw the fouls. But right here, the three-point shooting, getting it going for the number one three-point percentage shooter in the ACC, Kristen Carr, gets it to go for the Cardinals. One-point game with 427 left in the third quarter here inside the Tucker Center. Morgan Jones leading the all scores with 16 points and we flash back to her incredible performance wearing the FSU jersey in this matchup. Dropped 28 points against the Cardinals last season. It was the most points allowed by the Cardinals by any player in over three years and she was so good in that performance that Jeff Walls went in the portal and got Morgan Jones to come and play for the Cardinals. Had a heck of a performance last season on the Cardinal court versus that team. And Evan, I want to give another shout out to all my sorority sisters out there. Stewie, I'm not going to do the actual sounds and what? annoy everybody out there. It's a little high pitched sound that we do, but. Well, now, now I'm curious. Evan, don't make me do it on air. You know what? All my, all my AKAs out there who are watching. Wow. That's the sound. <laughs> That's the sound that we make. <laughs> I, I, I can't say I'm going to ask you to do it again. Nope, I can never do it again. Producer in the truck telling me right now, don't ever do it again. <laughs> okay. Let's all take a deep breath and compose ourselves for the final 
14 and a half minutes of this game. Our Founders Day, Evan. I got I got to get it in where I can. Louisville has retaken the lead courtesy of Morgan Jones. Scored over a thousand points for Florida State before becoming a grad student in Kentucky. Valencia Myers can't make the catch. Valencia Myers can't believe that she dropped that one, wants it back, but credit the Cardinal defense. Just down there swarming the players, crowding the paint, and mucking it up down there, not allowing those clean passes to get through. And Liff walked. Van Lith, a bit frustrated, kind of waves off the call, but this is a player that gets it back through her defense. You'll see her get frustrated, but she knows that defensively as Jeff Walls tries to plead the case to the referee. Morgan Jones is saying she traveled because of a wet spot, so let's get this thing cleaned up at our end of the floor. Morgan still knows the towel boys here, so she can get done, stuff done quickly. <laughs> Calls him by name, right? Haley joking with Morgan earlier in shoot around. She was like, this is your home, isn't it? <laughs> Playing like it today, 18 and seven. O'Brien. I got Van Lith. Yeah, yeah. Because it wasn't the block by Dixon. The block by Dixon was clean. It was the body on Van Lith. She's riding the side of Taylor O'Brien. And that's where the contact comes in at. And for the folks at home, Haley Van Lith could have avoided that foul by jumping out with that left foot and cutting off the lead foot of Taylor O'Brien. It's hard to do, it takes a lot of energy. But that's how you avoid that foul and instead draw the charge. Haley Van Lith is averaging almost 40 minutes a game in recent action, but she's got three fouls here with a good amount of time left in the game. Definitely has to play smart so that she's able to stay on the floor because Morgan Jones has been holding it down for Florida State, but best you believe Florida State. Dixon missed another layup. The Cardinals, should I say, are going to need Van Lith and Jones to score in the fourth. Tania Latson going to the line. And Latson has been extraordinarily quiet. One for nine from the field, five points. Which is three for three from the line and going back to her spot right now. And the Cardinals have been doing a good job of not allowing Latson to get to her strength. They're not allowing her to penetrate as well as she likes to. Lives at the free throw line knocks that one down, but they have not been allowing her to penetrate easily and get the shot she normally has gotten. Seminoles are 11 of 12 from the free throw line. Latson and O'Brien are both five for five. More free throws coming as Morgan Jones Try to reach the 20 point plateau at the line. It's all clockwork at this point for Morgan Jones. You know what she's gonna do? She's gonna catch the ball and attack the lead foot. And right there, Valenzuela has gotta close out under control. You know Morgan Jones is gonna play for the bounce off the dribble before she's gonna shoot. Give her a step. Second foul on Massengill. Morgan Jones. Season high 19 on Thursday. She's matched that so far today. And now Morgan Jones poetically has her career high as a Cardinal here against her old team at the Tucker Center. And right in time to see her old team. She's finding her groove, her niche with the cards. Like you just mentioned, coming off a 19-point game in the loss versus Virginia Tech. But it seems like she's Playing better off of Van Lith and Cochran. Corner three is down. It's good for Gordon. How many times has Louisville gotten within one and then Florida State's either hit a three or gotten a three-point play at the other end? I mean, it's just been so close the entire game, but Gordon right here knocks down the three. 
Ladson took a hard tumble. The defense for the cards trying to take that charge, but no call. Good job by Gordon. Nothing but net. Jones going to her left, throws it away. Myers tried to shovel it forward for O'Brien, and it was easily intercepted by Louisville. That's a travel on Harris. Freshman versus the vet. Valencia Myers doing an excellent job of staying composed and cutting off the baseline. Harris faced up. She knew she was going to put the ball on the floor. Myers just cut off the baseline and forced that travel. Thirteen turnovers for Louisville in the game. That one around and out. Jones grabs her eighth rebound. Here comes Carr. Van Lith was calling for it. She'll get it in the corner. Working on O'Brien. Needs help. Stepped out of bounds. How many times has that happened today? The Seminoles cut off the baseline and force the Cardinals to step out of bounds, which they generically like to do. And right there, the right foot of Haley Van Lith, you see it. She's forced out of bounds, but they know the Cardinals like to make that cross the court pass. Good job by the Seminoles. Corner three at the other side. This time, Valenzuela knocks it in. Valenzuela, you know what she can do. You have to play her for the three-point shot. Cochran just a little too late getting out there. Timeout, Jeff Walls. First time since the start of the second quarter that either team has stretched the lead beyond two possessions. And Valenzuela right here shoots the ball, nothing but net. She shoots 50% in her Seminole career. You know what she can do. Got to get out there and play her for the three. Great atmosphere here at the Tucker Center. Seminoles have scored six in a row to stretch the lead to seven with 141 left in the third. And we'll have a look at our Coyote Tractor turning point as Florida State hits a couple corner threes to extend the lead. And Florida State's just been doing it by committee. The Jetty got the party started early on. Taylor O'Brien got in on the mix. Gordon got in there for a three-point shot or two. Latson hasn't been having the offensive showing that we're used to seeing from her, but they've been doing it by committee. Only one player for the Seminoles, Bajetti, and double figure. She's got 15, but everyone else, Latson, seven points. Gordon, three points. Valenzuela hit a couple threes. She's got six. And Taylor O'Brien's got nine, getting it done down the statue. Six for 15 from three on the day so far for Florida State. That's 40%. And the Seminoles with 22 points so far in this third quarter. That's their most in any quarter of the game. Of course, Louisville has 19 points in the quarter. That's their most in any quarter of the game. One other outlier on the stat sheet, Haley Van Liff, aside from the points and rebounds and assists, she's got seven turnovers today. It's the most she's had in any game in her career. The junior for Louisville. When you play every minute of the game, on you, the score in the lead. Offensive rebound by Cochran. Hits the ground hard, and she was ushered there by a push. So the foul is on Florida State. It's on Timpson. Well, good job there by Cochran, knowing she was falling out of bounds. Still bouncing it off the defensive player as she was getting fouled. Because you don't know if you're going to get that call. So you got to make sure the possession stays in your favor. Third foul on Timpson. And the Cardinals are in the bonus on the fifth team foul of the quarter. So Cochran to the free throw line for Louisville. And the Cardinals are on a bit of a scoring drought. They haven't scored a field goal in the last three minutes and 37 seconds. for two at the line for Cochran. Seminoles by six. Omaria well, Gordon flails it up there. You might think oh, we're up six late in the third. Let's calmly work for a shot. No, Omaria Gordon goes after it in a hurry. 
perhaps a little more quickly than her coach wanted. I don't think she was expecting to go around Timpson to find Valenzuela there. Or sorry, excuse me, Josie Williams there. I think the size of Williams just affected her shot. Van Lith looking for her shot again, and free throws are coming. And right here, Florida State's got to adjust on the defensive end because that person chasing over that screen is late, and it's allowing Van Lith to take that one dribble and get that pull-up jumper as she knocks down the second free throw. So Florida State, they've either got to go under and play her for the three, force her to play that three and give her a step, or they've got to hedge harder with the help side defense. Corner three would not go down for Florida State's O'Brien. By the way, if this feels like it's been a choppier third quarter, it's not just you. There were 13 fouls called in the 20-minute first half. There have been 13 fouls called so far in the nine and a half minutes in this third quarter. And the two teams combined. It's like both teams get a bit of momentum. They get transition in their favor. They get runs in their favor. And then you've got the defense that adjusts and puts a stop to it. So both teams have had gone on runs, and both teams also have been a little stagnant offensively sometimes during this game. Again, no field goals for the Cardinals in the last four minutes and 30 seconds. Now. And yet it's still a four-point game. Yeah. A two-second difference here between the game and shot clock. Jetty bumped by Williams. And that'll be two free throws. The 14th foul called in the quarter, sending Bajetti to the line for two. If your post players are going to defend and trap by the half court line, they've got to move their feet. And right there, Josie Williams got exploited by Bajetti in that quick first step. And if you know you're facing a quicker player, well, you've got to close out at an angle. You can't go right at them because they're going to beat you. All right, Louisville, unless there's a jump ball in these next nine seconds, Louisville will get the ball to start the fourth. So they've got a chance to score here at the end of the third and then score to start the fourth. Heck, it could be a tie game the next time Florida State touches the ball. They can pair a couple threes together. Oh, all the way in a missed layup. Mikasa Robinson got what she wanted and just missed the point blank bunny. Yeah, I think she was a little surprised at how open she was. Says she got a foul, looked at the ref and grabbed her arm, but a little bit too much on the layup at the end. We take the turn for home today inside the Tucker Center. Florida State trying to get to six and one in ACC play, a six point lead after three. Louisville and Florida State, their only meeting of the regular season, heading to the fourth quarter here in Tallahassee. 57-51, Florida State leads. One of the big differences that jumps out at you on the stat sheet is the points off turnovers. Florida State has 17 points off 15 Louisville turnovers. Almost half of those turnovers coming from Louisville's best player. Yeah, they're not allowing Haley Van Liv to get anything easy. She's had to stay in this one off her defense and transition. She's got a couple threes to go, but they haven't allowed her to get off anything easy. And on the flip side, Florida State, Ladson hasn't had the traditional game that she's used to having. Only seven points in this one, one of nine from the field, over two beyond the arc, but she's five of five from the free throw line. So for both those players look for the Louisville Cardinals to give Van Lith some more opportunities at the rim and Ladson some more opportunities for Florida State. Van Lith remains on the floor with Pono, Carr, Cochran, and Jones. Good play setting up Cochran for two. It's a four-point game. Cochran did a good job. She took the extra bounce, sized up the defense to see if she was double teamed or not, and just elevated over Massengill. Heck of a play by Jeff Walls' team out of the break. In and out on the answer attempt, and it will stay the same way. Latson and the Seminoles will maintain possession 
Notice Latson didn't get that one to go. Another shot for her that rimmed in and out. But what did she do? She followed her shot. She didn't pout and say, dang, I missed another shot. She followed her shot and extended the possession. Bad pass stolen by Carr. Ahead, Jones. It's a two-point game. Now her teammates can't turn the ball over, but <laughs> she extended the possession initially. 22 now for Morgan Jones. She had a 36-point game as a Seminole a couple years ago against Clemson. Still, still a ways away from that. Had a heck of a day. Her best day as a Cardinal against her old team. Storybook. Timpson lost it again. Seminoles with back-to-back -back turnovers. And Louisville's looking to tie or take the lead. And Brooke Wyckoff is livid. Carr for the lead. Puts it in. Cardinals have scored seven straight to start the fourth. Brooke Wyckoff is screaming at the official about a foul on the previous possession. But with 8.51 to go, Louisville has retaken the lead. Smart timeout by Brooke Wyckoff to stop the momentum because this is what happens when you don't do that. Chris Lynn Carr, the best three-point percentage shooter in the ACC, getting that one to go for the Cards. Time for today's CPI security, protecting the paint. Really all game long, Louisville's defense has been stingy, but early in this fourth quarter, a couple really strong defensive possessions for the Cardinals. Yeah, you ever wonder how you can give up 17 points off turnovers and still be up by one through three quarters where you get it done with your defense, and that's what the Cardinals have done. They've been feisty all game, turning their defense into offense. Haley Van Lip has gotten the job done. Cochran and Jones have also gotten in there, just turning their defense into offense, a big reason why they've got a one-point lead in the fourth. Florida State has been in front almost the entire game. Less than a minute on the clock with the lead for Louisville, but they've got it now with 8.51 to go. Brooke Wyckoff during that last timeout spoke to her team for a portion of it and also spent some time with Carla Fountain, and I don't think they were catching up about how their holidays were. <laughs> no, I think she was trying to get some understanding on the foul or at least plead the case for her for players on how that was a foul, and sometimes coaches got to do that. The ref may not pay attention to every little thing or may not see something. As a player or a coach, you've got to bring it to their attention sometimes. Respectfully. <laughs> Latson has been quiet today, looking for her shot and scores. She gets up grimacing every shot coming at a difficulty level of 10 for Latson. Nine points today, and only it's two of 11. It's a season low. Look, she's had 20 or more in 17 of her 19 games. Nine points right now. Got a sense she's probably not done. Haley Van Lith. She was fouled. And look, we, we build it off the top. A battle of the league's top two scorers. Van Lith for Louisville. Latson for Florida State. So far, it's been Morgan Jones for Louisville and Sarah Pajetti for Florida State. Do, do you think Van Lith and Latson look for their shots more in the fourth? Absolutely. I, I think they have to. But again, as Cochran loses it on the dribble on Timpson out of bounds. If you go past Van Lith and Latson, the two X Factor players, in my opinion, are going to be Pajetti and Jones. So fittingly, they picked up where Latson and Van Lith are kind of lacking in this game. And I say lacking with quotation marks because right. both those players still filling up the stat sheet. Timpson rises over the defense and gets the two to go. Timpson's got eight points and six rebounds. Back-to-back -back buckets for Florida State out of the timeout. Van Lith can't connect. Kono all by herself on the glass. Back up and in. Kono giving a bit of a pump fake. Thought Timpson, who's the leading shot blocker in the ACC, might have been nearby. Couldn't Didn't realize fathom. she was open. Excuse me, couldn't fathom how she was that open. <laughs> One point game. Latson again, attacks. No, rebound. No good for Howard. Oh, tremendous hustle, but it will be Louisville ball. Latson leaving skid marks on the court. Bodies on the floor at both ends of the floor. And it's the hustle for me. You've got the two leading scores in the ACC diving, 
trying to get the possession to their team as the clock winds down in the fourth. And lift. Wow. <laughs> you could see Carla Fountain sort to start to raise her hand as if to indicate a foul. And she twitched and pulled her arm she down. No. And Van Lith gives Louisville the lead. But I think that what Carla Fountain's doing and the other referees is allowing them to play at both ends. It's been chippy at both ends of the floor. Ooh, that could have been the fourth on Van Lith, too. Air ball for Latson. Louisville with a one point lead and the basketball. And this is where you see that dog, that fight that Bailey, Haley Van Lith, excuse me, has. But Jetty tries to take the charge. But Van Lith, with a nice spin move, continues to play. Does a good job finishing. I'll say this, I'm okay with that not being a foul, but I don't think Bajetti flopped. No, I don't Van think so Lith either. scores again. I agree, I agree. I don't think Bajetti flopped. And I, you know, definitely wasn't trying to insinuate that. I know you don't think I no. was insinuating that, but I I'm happy you brought that up. Bajetti did not flop. She did a good job of trying to take the contact. It just went in Van Lith's favor. Latson fouled before the shot. First Louisville foul of the fourth quarter. Nearly four, uh, just over four minutes gone. Morgan Jones just picked up her third. So a quick check of the fouls. Jones and Van Lith each have three. The Jetty, Timpson, and Myers each have three on the other side. Timpson, no! And she'll get fouled by, I think, Cochran. KK Timpson following her shot, going for the offensive rebound. And this is why it's so important to box out. Apparently they just called that on Morgan Jones and it's her fourth. Thought it was going to be number three on Liv Cochran. Instead they give it to Jones. And that's huge for the Cardinals because Morgan Jones is the leading scorer in this game. She's got 22 points and she's been the hot hand. They've just been giving it to him saying, hey, drive to the rim, stop the clock and draw fouls. Jones getting a breather. I don't imagine she'll be out for too long with the four fouls. Timpson in double figures for the 17th time in 20 ball games this year. Back to a one point game. Carr taps her chin. Motion on the perimeter for Louisville. Kono playing some crunch time minutes for the Cards after a DNP on Thursday. Oh no, to Cochran. Very, very smart. Cochran saw that Timpson was right there and just elevated. Didn't go into the defense and did a nice little hook in the paint. Bajetti going downhill and Carr ripped it away. It's going to stay Florida State ball, but a sensational defensive rip from Chrislyn Carr. Chrislyn Carr said, weight room with a smile on her face at the end of this play, takes on Bajetti, and that's no easy task. And right here just muscles the ball away and says, get in the weight room. Bajetti goes crashing the floor, and Carr just flexes over her. Masson Gills three, doesn't get the roll. Carr secures the rebound. Gets across the timeline and waits for everybody else. Van Lift fakes it on Howard, takes it at the elbow. Cochran on the glass, up and in after a 7.20 on the rim. KK Timpson left Cochran to test or contest the shot as Bajetti hangs in the air and goes underneath the defense. Nice bunny underneath. Some great players taking what they want. Carr answers like a lightning bolt to the bucket. And a timeout taken after the hoop for Louisville. What a sequence we've had as the Cardinals take a five point lead. Chris Lynn Carr is breathing a sigh of relief because KK Timpson's fingernails look like they might have gotten that one. Chris Lynn Carr, the smallest player on the floor, gets the two to go underneath. Nineteen to eight, Louisville. 
through the first five and a half minutes here in this fourth quarter. Turning the tide here at the Tucker Center. Crystal Carr just activating herself late in this game. Has gotten the offense going, but also has gotten her defense going. Ten points on the night. Naya Latson has not been her day. Casa Robinson, credit her defense. Just did an excellent job of not allowing herself to get beat in a foot race. Played nice defense up through the rim. So despite all the weekly awards and eye-popping stats, Tania Latson apparently is human. <laughs> Two for 14 today, nine points. Cochran, two more. <laughs> Liv says, in the paint, I live there. Olivia Cochran shaking her head as she backpedals too easy. Largest lead of the day, and Van List deflection creates another turnover. Carr, offensive foul. Shoved away Bajetti and got caught. As physical as Bajetti is, she absorbs that same amount of contact that she gives. Just does an excellent job of sacrificing her body. And look at her, she beats Crystalline Carr in a foot race. And what does she do, ladies and gentlemen? She gets in front of that lead foot, which allows Crystalline Carr to shove off with that right arm to be exposed right in front of the rest, the referees, excuse me. Deep three, Bajetti goes. Goodness gracious. Gets herself going on the defensive end and responds offensively. She is the X factor outside of Latson, but Jenny is the X factor for the Seminole squad. What a massive shot. Go from a seven point game to a four point game. Yep. It's got a legal screen. They're saying Crystal Carr, as she passed the ball and cut off of the ball pass. Pushed off on Bajetti, and Bajetti did a little bit of selling. Right here. Yeah. It's a little bit of selling, but that left arm by Crystalline Carr does go into the face of Bajetti, so that is the correct call. No arguments here. Oh. Bajetti just battling right now. She and Jones collided, and now they're going to call a foul on Florida State as Van Lith was strong with the ball. This is getting really physical both ways. And the refs doing the right thing, stepping in between and saying, hey, let's finish this one clean. Both teams want to win and want possession. And right there, Bajetti and Jones Van just Liff collide. Just got a clean steal. And Liff might have like a, a scratch on her face from that last little skirmish. <laughs> She just plays with such a chip on her shoulder. Just so confident. Called it on O'Brien. We get a close up of Van Lift. Cochran's been the go to Cardinal in this fourth quarter. She's got eight points in the period. Cochran dishes and it's tipped out of bounds by Valenzuela. Valenzuela doing a good job recovering. It was a half second too late, but was able to knock that one out. Help side defense was there, prevented the easy two. Into Cochran. Rebound. Offensive foul again. Robinson shoved away Bajetti, who's just been like a rag dog getting thrown around here in this fourth quarter. I mean, she should, in my opinion, make first team, all ACC defensive team. And Bajetti right there, Mikasa Robinson's right arm. What is it about Bajetti that makes her so easily pushable? Well, one, she's small. And, but she's and, and small annoying and, and scrappy. She's very scrappy, and she goes after every loose ball. It's her motor, and it's her hustle. She forces you to foul her with her hustle. Look at her on the floor again. <laughs> and sells it, but does an amazing job with her hustle. And ladies and gentlemen, that takes a lot of being in shape, a lot of hustle plays. And that's the big reason why I say she's the X factor for the Seminoles. I don't know how you feel about this, but we, we've watched Virginia Tech a bunch, and there's a lot of hype about Elizabeth Kitley and Justified. I think we got to start the Georgia Amor first team All ACC <laughs> campaign. My Amore. 
He's been so clutch in so many big moments for them. Pichetti at the line. Where she has been perfect today. 24 points for Sarah Pichetti. Too shy of her career high. Three of her best scoring performances have all been her last three games. Van Lith, free throw jumper, good. Back and forth. The attitude and competitive nature between Van Lith and Bajetti, both of them feisty, both of them getting their defense, turning it into offense. Van Lith just responded. Looking cross lane, tough catch by Tinson, and she scores. 12 and 7 for KK Timpson. Two point game again, under two to play. Van Lith has got her 18 points. She's had at least 18 in every ACC game this year. Only player in the league who's done that. A little work off the dribble. Jones on the glass, back up and in. Second chance effort at the rim extends the possession for the Cardinals with the clock stopped. 24 for Morgan Jones and a free throw on top. And look at this, she just runs into the lane and out jumps two seminal defensive players for that rebound, grabs the second chance opportunity and gets the and one. It's all about the hustle and the fight in these last late moments of the game. Her best game is a Louisville Cardinal against her former team. Morgan Jones has 25 and 10. Five point game. Latson had it poked away. Fortunately, finds Timpson. Tough turnaround. Dead dishes. Seminoles somehow worked out a basket. And it's Latson in the double figures. And I tell you, Robinson made Latson work on that whole possession. They tried to get Lats in the ball twice on that when she had to get it off the broken play, but completes easy two underneath. Haley Van Lith can't connect for three. Seminoles down by three, under a minute. Bajetti fouled by Cochran. Number three on Liv Cochran. And Bajetti trying to inch Florida State closer. Welcome to the racetrack, ladies and gentlemen. The pace right now, but Jetty just going right into the contact of Cochran. And Cochran does a nice job blocking the shot, but comes down with the body. So here's my big takeaway for this game, 39 minutes and five seconds in. And it's kind of the same takeaway I had watching Louisville Virginia Tech on Thursday. These teams are really close. Yep. on paper yep. and on the floor. They're just really, really close. The margins are really small. I told both coaches, Coach Walls and Coach Wyckoff, that this, to me, on paper, are two very evenly matched teams because of the style of basketball they like to play. Morgan Jones defended well. Nine to shoot for Louisville. Up by two. Haley Van Lith has a dance with Bajetti. Van Lith. Haley Van Lith <laughs> get that over the well-defended Bajetti. Haley Van Lith trying to secure the win for the Cardinals, gives up a prayer over Bajetti and knocks that one down. The smile on her face put the Cardinals up by five. 25 seconds left. Still catching our breath after that heartbreaking shot from Haley Van Lith. Heartbreaking for Florida State fans. Exhilarating for the Louisville Cardinals bench as the shot clock buzzer sounded. They're checking whether it was a two or a three. Can't tell from that angle. Yeah, can't tell from that angle. Still impressive. <laughs> well, we know the shot's good. That's what we do know. It's all before the red light goes off. And this is a better one right here. The step back by Van Lith, and I believe her right foot is on the line. I thought so, too. So if the 
shot is ruled a two. It'll be a four point game with 25.1 seconds left. How about the Cardinals just turning it up a notch in this fourth quarter? And it's been Haley Van Lip behind Morgan Jones who took over the show earlier, but you can just see the right. Both I think it was the right, yeah, both feet, right and left, just on the line. Well, Florida State was up by six, heading for the fourth. But Louisville scored the first seven points of this fourth quarter and have just had the answer every time Florida State has scored to get back within two, to get back within one. Two great teams counter-punching. Two teams that have the potential to play deep into March and beyond. Uh, Evan, I don't think either one of these teams, whoever comes out on top today, no one lost this game. There's a team that's going to come out winning this game. Of course, there's some things you can do better if you're the Cardinals or if you're the Seminoles. But all, everything laid out on paper, I think this was a well-fought game, pretty evenly matched, and we mentioned it before the break. Both these teams on paper pretty even in how they play. The officials are still looking at this monitor. And it's almost like they're saying, is that conclusive? Uh, looking at it, I think it's conclusive, yeah. but yeah, they are going to call it a two. Carla Fountain just put up two fingers in the air. Yeah, both feet on the line. So Van Lith has 14 in the second half, 20 for the game. Three players in double figures for Louisville. And also three in double figures for Florida State. So Florida State's taking a timeout after this long review. And I think they're taking a timeout just to be able to advance the ball and save time that way. It's their penultimate timeout, so they got one left after this one. Part of me wishes coaches would save their timeouts because we might have eight more possessions left in this game. Yeah. And you might want to advance the ball with one second to go, and that could be the difference. But I understand they want to call the timeout to advance the ball here. And sometimes you got to regain the momentum also and also get a game plan for your team. You know, you want to extend that resting period to make sure your players got it in their head, like this is the play that we're running. This is how we defend. We don't want to foul. We don't want to do this. Masson go to inbounds. Matson peels back to the corner and said it's Bajetti. Bajetti for Howard. Florida State needs to get a shot up. Bajetti airmails one. That never had a chance. The shot a bit out of control for Bajetti. And she just hung her head after that when he was off after the release. Game lift. Going to the line, but Jetty will watch the rest of the game from the bench as she picks up her fifth foul. 25 points, two assists, 30 minutes for Bajetti. And look, sorry, Tab, I, I want to make something absolutely clear. Regardless of the result here, Florida State should be in the top 25 tomorrow. I mean, Florida State has much more grounds to the top 25 than NC State does. And you could argue more than Virginia Tech or North Carolina. Both these teams, frankly, deserve to be in the top 25. But if folks look at this, oh, they lost at home to Louisville. The Louisville team that has lost 20 games in their last nine seasons in ACC play. I mean, this is a juggernaut program that's sort of announcing with this stretch. Look, we're still here. Absolutely, and Jeff Walls has done a heck of a job with this program since leaving Maryland. He won a championship at Maryland, so he has that championship pedigree. Has transferred that over to Louisville and has built this championship program, so he knows how to win. And for the Cardinals, they just did an excellent job of hanging in there. We saw earlier in this fourth quarter how Florida State had to lead for about 24 minutes of this game. And then the Cardinals just took over in this fourth quarter. And I know it's frustrating for Bajetti, but she played a heck of a game. Fouled out, and she had four fouls for the longest time and happened to draw at least three charges while having four fouls. Anaya Latson looking for three, won't go. Florida State had a six-point lead heading into the fourth quarter. 
but it was not enough against Jeff Walls and the Cardinals. And Jeff Walls told me before the game, I said, what do you want to see your team improve on in this game? And he said, I just want them to compete. A full 40 minutes, get out there, play hard, and compete at a high level, and I think they did just that. Louisville's scored as many points in this fourth quarter as they scored in the entire first half. And it's about to be more if Cochran can convert the line. Yes, indeed. Huge final period for Liv Cochran. Van Liff, 20 points, eight rebounds, eight assists, playing through the seven turnovers. And Louisville has a marquee road win after getting flummoxed down the stretch in Blacksburg on Thursday. The Cardinals escape the tough week with a split. Besting Brooke Wyckoff Seminoles 82 75. They got it done by committee, and Morgan Jones held it down while Van Lith was trying to get herself going on the offensive end. Morgan Jones and her sort of homecoming back to Florida State, where she was an All American, got it going. She finished with 25 points on the night. What a game! What a game! Morgan Jones, congrats to her coming back to Florida State and walking out with a win. And a game high 25. Bajetti also had 25. Two great teams. Hopefully, we see this matchup again in Greensboro. Absolutely. No one lost this game. The Cardinals came out on top. They got to the victory, and they did it by committee. So, both the Cardinals and the Seminoles are 5 and 2 in the league. Louisville hands Florida State its first. Home loss of the season snaps their 10 game winning streak here at the Tucker Center. Also the first time all year the Seminoles have lost when leading at the half. They had been 13 and 0. We'll see you Thursday night from Little John for the Fighting Irish and the Tigers. For now, hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday slate. For Tabitha Turner and our entire crew, Evan Lepler saying good afternoon from Tallahassee where the Cardinals walk out with a win.